Yes, hi. So um, we're back and uh, from now on, we are going to be addressing very important aspect um, in, in, in uh, magnetized fluids, uh, namely that of reconnection. Uh, this is a phenomenon that is really outside the purview of, of uh, uh, ideal magnetohydrodynamics. Okay, so uh, what I mean to say here is that this this phenomenon of reconnection, which is essentially uh, cut and paste of field lines, magnetic field lines. Okay. This is a non-ideal MHD. This falls within the purview of non-ideal MHD. In other words, everything that we've discussed so far by way of ideal MHD, it breaks down for this, phenom for this particular phenomenon. Okay. Uh, so you might ask why I thought we were discussing ideal MHD and uh, I, I, the whole point I thought was, uh, you know, ideal MHD is good for certain things and, and, and so, uh, you know, what's the point? Well, I just want you to keep this in mind for the time being and I'll tell you exactly how it, it violates ideal MHD. But the thing is, reconnection is a very important uh, uh, phenomenon from the point of view of Converting uh, magnetic energy, converting, I might even say excess, excess magnetic energy. Okay, I'll, I'll explain what what I mean by excess in a minute. Okay, Conver converting magnetic energy uh, into into say kinetic energy of the fluid, uh, uh, kinetic. In other words, bulk motion of the fluid, kinetic energy of fluid and or heat, heating the plasma, making the plasma hotter than it is, uh, hotter than it originally was. Okay. Now this is this, in, in, in many ways this is the real reason it's so important in or rather reconnection is invoked so often in astrophysics. Okay, in astrophysics, one often struggles to explain uh, the heating of plasma. The plasma that you observe is too hot, uh, is, is, is uh, often um, hotter than it ought to be. Okay, so in other words, you always are searching for an energy source. Okay, what is heating the plasma? Who is responsible for heating the plasma and so on and so forth? Now, magnetic field lines many times are stressed. In other words, they are, you remember when we, when we talked about a, a, a potential uh, a field configuration, when we, uh, when we said, uh, you know, B can be written as, as, as a minus grad phi kind of thing where phi is a scalar potential, okay? And then you are provided a certain boundary condition and then you solve Laplace's equation to find the, find the magnetic field. So this would be a potential configuration, right? Which by definition is the lowest energy configuration. But in many cases, it's reasonable to suspect that uh, magnetic fields are stressed or they are twisted and turned, okay, um, and, 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 and carry energy over and above and above the potential configuration for any given situation. Okay, now we know that uh, uh, everything in nature, nature generally uh, likes to have the, uh, you know, whatever there is, relax to the potential configuration. If, you, if I place a pencil on the edge of this table, it tends to fall off, okay. Why? Okay, it falls off, that's one thing, that's because it's attracted by gravity, but it falls off so as to attain the lowest possible potential energy. Okay, so, or low, yeah, so, so it always, nature always tends to minimize energy and the potential configuration in this case uh, is the lowest possible energy state. So, but 
In many cases, there's reason to believe in many astrophysical situations, it's reason, there's reason to believe that the magnetic energy, uh, uh, the magnetic fields are stressed or are twisted and, and, and because of plasma motions and things like that. We, we will, um, you know, uh, come to more specific uh, details of this later on. But at the moment, I just want to motivate the idea uh, why we, we are talking about reconnection at all. So I, I just want to briefly motivate it before delving into the details. Okay. So the thing is, in, in many astrophysical situations, it's, it's reasonable to expect that magnetic fields are quote unquote stressed and they carry energy over and above the lowest energy configuration, which is the potential configuration. And the reconnection phenomenon enables uh, these uh, stressed fields, the, the, the stressed, uh, the, the, the stressed uh, B field configuration, okay, to relax, to relax, in other words, come down to the potential configuration, potential configuration. And of course, in doing so, you know, uh, uh, there, uh, I mean, so so the stressed configuration has more energy, and the potential configuration has the lowest possible energy. So there's an energy differential. So this excess energy. So that's what I mean by saying this. Okay, this excess magnetic energy. Okay, the reconnection enables enables this change. Enables the stressed. Uh, fields to relax to a, a lower energy configuration and the excess energy is converted partly into kinetic energy of the fluid. In other words, it is converted into accelerating the bulk fluid uh, and or uh, heating the fluid. And so, so this is a way of heating the fluid or the plasma, I really should say. Um, yeah, so he, he, heating the plasma, okay. And so, this is a way of, of explaining uh, reconnection essentially is, is, is invoked as not exactly an energy source, but a via media for the energy source. The ultimate energy source is the magnetic field configuration. But how can you extract energy from the magnetic field configuration via this process called reconnection? So now, with that little uh, um, you know, introduction, let us now um, turn our attention to try to consider what reconnection really is. Okay, what is this? Now you see, from the divergence of B equals 0, which is sacrosanct, you cannot, you know, you cannot violate that. Uh, we, we, this essentially says that uh, magnetic fields are always closed loops. Okay. You, cannot, you cannot cut lines like this. Not possible. Okay. They are always, always closed loop. Okay. But reconnection, the whole point of reconnection is there is cutting and pasting. In other words, if there is, a, we will see this, if there are two magnetic field lines that approach like this, of course, this, this closes back and this closes back. You know, in, in other words, it is not, not as if this is just isolated. This, this closes back somewhere far away and this also closes back very far away. Okay. If these two magnetic field lines approach each other, for whatever reason, okay, and maybe the fluid, the I mean, as you know, in ideal MHD, and I'll tell you, I, I told you that this is a non-ideal MHD effect, yes, but ideal ideal MHD is still valid in the bulk. It's only exactly where the reconnection is happening that the assumptions of ideal MHD are broken down. I, I, we will elaborate on that on, on all this in a minute. Okay, but um, so consider two oppositely field uh, directed field lines like so which are approaching each other. Now, why are they approaching each other? Because the bulk fluid is telling them to do so. Okay? The, the, this would be the arrow of the bulk fluid flow. There can be, one can envisage situations where there, there are these oppositely directed flows. And because the bulk fluid is, 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 here is flowing this way and the bulk, bulk fluid here is flowing, flowing this way and the magnetic fields are frozen into the fluid in the bulk, in, in, in the large scale fluid, the magnetic fields are still frozen in, ideal MHD still holds. Okay, the magnetic fields have to obey whatever the fluid flow is telling them to. So they approach each other and they approach each other very, very close by and so this would be a before situation. And so what would happen afterwards is that this guy, this portion reconnects to this portion 
and this portion reconnects to this portion leading to a situation which looks like this. This was what was before and this is what is after. Okay, this would be before and this would be after. Okay, in other words, what happened was this used to be like this and this used to be like this. But now, these fields have reconnected. In other words, this field line has connected with this field line and, and, and this field line is connected with this field line to change the configuration. Okay, so this was what it looked like before and this is what it looks like afterwards. Okay, this is a very common cartoon to il illustrate the phenomenon of reconnection, but bear in mind that this is really, really very simplistic. This is uh, showing something in just two dimensions. In, in reality, re reconnection is a three dimensional phenomenon. Uh, with all those caveats, let's proceed ahead. There are several reasons reconnection is not allowed in ideal MHD. Number one, it violates uh, divergence of B0. Number two, there is, a, just, we, we remarked this earlier, in ideal MHD, just like there's conservation of flux, there's also a, a conservation of a related quantity ca called helicity, okay? And the conservation of helicity is, a, yeah, so, so it, it's similar to flux conservation, which follows from flux freezing, but conservation of helicity is not the same as flux conservation, it's slightly different, but at any rate, conservation of helicity explicitly forbids cutting and pasting of field lines, okay? Yeah, so it prohibits such cut and paste situations like we, like we saw. In ideal MHD, the ideal MHD tenets are really valid only in the bulk fluid and in small areas uh, where the reconnection is actually happening, the laws of ideal MHD can be violated, okay? Uh, because of finite resistivity effects, because kinetic effects come into picture, so on and so forth. We'll discuss all this. And so uh, this cutting and pasting can be allowed, all right. If reconnection is violating ideal MHD, uh, you know, it should, it should involve a violation of some of the tenets of MHD, which is specifically, it in many times, uh, one invokes finite resistivity effects. You know, in ideal MHD, In ideal MHD, resistivity tends to zero, right? So, strictly speaking, it is zero or a conductivity is infinite. That's how. However, if you invoke finite resistivity effects, at least in, 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 in very local situations like where, where, where you have, you know, these two field lines coming very close together, at least in, in, in this diffusion region out here, if you invoke finite resistivity, then you can get away by saying, you can get away by saying that ideal MHD is kind of violated around here. Whereas very far away, it's still ideal MHD and ideal MHD is not violated. Okay, so just wanted to give you a flavor. Right, so, so um, uh, specifically finite resistivity effects are often, so which of these ideal MHD tenets is violated? Well, this one can often be violated, finite resistivity effects, okay. Now, so, but first let's look at what happens when oppositely directed uh, magnetic fields, um, you know, uh, approach each other, right. So, um, due to some reason, maybe the velocity field is doing it, like, like we said. Right? So, what happens? What happens is, you see, this is a cartoon of, of uh, oppositely directed field lines. This is, this, you know, the blue lines are the, are, the, are the magnetic field lines. And so, they are directed this way out here and are directed this way out here. And of course, they, they close back. They close back at infinity somewhere. Okay? They close back at infinity. That's not a problem. But they are approaching each other. Now, let us blow up. And, and something is happening where, where this green thing is there. This is what's called a current sheet. Okay, we, we will, we will uh, you know, uh, examine this in, in a bit of a detail. Let's blow this up. This small thing is blown up like this. Okay, and you see, so this is essentially where a current sheet is formed.
is formed. Okay. Why, why would we need a current sheet? We will, we will uh, discuss this in a minute. Another way of blowing this up even more is to say that, so uh, essentially this picture is turned by 90 degrees out here. So you see, it's not as if there's an abrupt change, there's an abrupt change in the magnetic field direction between here and here. Okay, if you look at the plane, if you cut this plane, you know, perpendicular to the plane of this screen, it starts looking like this. Okay, so the magnetic fields were originally pointing this way and finally after everything is over, the magnetic fields are pointing the other way, opposite way. You see this is opposite from that. Okay, that's evident but exactly how does this transition happen between here and here? The transition happens rather gradually. Okay, between here and here, there's a slight change in magnetic field direction, and here the change in the magnetic field direction is a little more evident, and here the magnetic field becomes almost horizontal, and here it starts rotating a little more until by the time you come here, the magnetic field has completely flipped. It's 180 degrees out of phase from what it was here. Okay, and this entire thing, this entire region is called the current sheet. Why we call it as this funny name current sheet, I'll tell you in a minute. So you see, this thing of current sheet, this simply follows from Ampere's law. Okay, there's something about this green region which is, which lies in between regions of oppositely directed magnetic fields, right? So which, which makes it look like a current sheet. Okay, so the way I would think is easiest to understand is consider the right hand rule where you have, you know, a, a current loop, sorry, a magnetic field loop giving rise to a current. This would be J and this would be B. This is the magnetic field loop and this is the current. Okay, now you see on either side, either the, the J might not be pointing this way, it might be pointing this way. I, 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 either way, it's a right hand rule. Okay, but the main thing, that's not, that's not so important, the main thing to notice is that if you project this loop on the screen, the magnetic field is in this direction here as, and it's in this direction here. So on either side of the current, okay, and on either side of the current, the magnetic fields are pointing in opposite direction and that's exactly what's going on here. If you need the magnetic field to change directions, okay, Simply from Ampere's law, uh, there is no way out. There has to be a current in between. Okay, and how exactly is that current directed? Well, in this case, the simplest way is to look at look at this diagram. And in this case, the current is is directed either into the plane of the screen or out of the plane of the screen, depending upon how the right hand rule goes. At any rate, this green th this green region contains currents that are perpendicular, whose direction is perpendicular to the plane of the screen. Okay, so that is why it, the, the, the fact that there is a current sheet follows simply from Ampere's law. Okay, follows from plus a displacement current, if you will, okay? That's not so important. You might say that you don't want to have a physical current here, you want to have a displacement current here, that's fine, okay? It, it can be this kind of current, it can be this kind of current. Either way, there is a current, okay? And that the direction of that current is perpendicular to the plane of the paper, that is it. You can either understand it this way or you can understand it in this elementary way either way. Okay, so let us now um, look at a 1D picture of uh, reconnection. Uh, so, so this is exactly what we had drawn earlier. So this is the before picture. Okay, so this is the, so for some reason oppositely directed magnetic fields are approaching each other. They are frozen into the fluid and the fluid is making these two magnetic fields lines approach each other, okay? And after they approach each other, what happens is this guy, this guy chooses to reconnect with this guy to form this kind of a loop 
and this guy chooses to reconnect with this guy to form this kind of a loop. So therefore, this and this are an after kind of thing. After, after what? Well, after reconnection. Right. So this and this are an after thing and this and this are a before thing. Okay. Right. So and, and what happened and, and this this green region is the is the region where the reconnection actually happens. So this is you would call the reconnection region. This is where the current sheet is formed and all those interesting things happen. And afterwards what happens? Because this reconnection happens, they're like uh, magnetic fields are still like rubber bands, remember. They tend to snap. They tend to snap apart in this direction, like this, like this and like that. They tend to snap apart and they actually drive flows. These are called reconnection outflows. It's all very interesting. Okay, so. And so, so before we delve into the specifics of reconnection, it's, it's useful to sort of uh, lay down some general issues. We've already discussed this, but it's good to look at it in, in, in another way. Most generally, reconnection is a matter of changes in field line topology. This is one example, but, you know, like we said, like I said in the beginning, um, this is just a two-dimensional, you know, cartoon. And in, 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 uh, even in two dimensions, uh, the situation can be much more complex. And, um, you know, in reality, uh, this thing actually happens in three dimensions. Like we live in three dimensions, obviously. So uh, in three dimensions, what happens is reconnection is that, uh, it, it's, it's best to understand reconnection as that process which allows changes in field line topology. Okay. Right. It's most simply visualized in 1D, of course, like this. It's most simply uh, visualized in 1D with, a, uh, with uh, you know, field lines and it's actually two dimensions really, really. And so, so the field lines of the two, uh, two sides are anti-parallel and there's a current sheet in between this, this thing that we talked about, either here or here, right? There's a current sheet in between. And as the field lines approach closer, we have said, we, we've said this, the current sheet gets thinner and thinner and thinner until finite resistivity effects become important at the quote unquote neutral or X point and that is what this is. So here in the reconnection region, finite resistivity effects finite resistivity effects become important okay just in this small region okay uh, where the current sheet becomes thinner and thinner and thinner and uh, it's in this region that finite resistivity effects become important okay and that's called that's also in the reconnection region is also often called the neutral point or the x point for obvious reasons you see the field line configuration kind of looks like an x okay you can also think of it as a neutral point because right here right in the center the magnetic field is technically zero okay this complete annihilation of magnetic fields so it's also called a neutral point okay now so we said finite resistivity effects become important in, in, in that thin region. So what about it? Well, because finite resistivity is not allowed in MHD, okay, in MHD technically, uh, you know, resistivity tends to zero, right? So therefore, as a result, the ideal, uh, the ideal MHD frozen in condition does not hold anymore. You remember the frozen in condition, the fact that Magnetic fields are completely frozen into the fluid. The fluid, uh, the, the, the fluid, the fluid tells the magnetic fields what to do, and so on and so forth. This is a consequence. This is a direct consequence. This followed from E plus V cross B over C equals zero. You remember? So, so that is how we derive the Alfine flux freezing theorem. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. But all of that uh, relied on uh, rather heavily on the fact that the resistivity was technically equal to zero. Now, if that is no longer so, 
okay. The ideal MHD frozen in condition does not hold anymore only in that local region, only in, the, in, in, in that green region, okay, at the near the X point and cutting and pasting of field lines is allowed like this kind of thing. This, this, kind of, this, this kind of cutting and pasting is allowed. Okay, and that is what so so the original configuration is altered and the new configuration kind of snaps apart. Okay, and the whole process of course has to satisfy mass conservation. In other words, the amount of mass that is flowing in to this neutral X point has to equal the amount of mass that's leaving. Okay, so that is one thing. This mass conservation is still followed. However, very importantly magnetic flux is no longer conserved. Very important. Now, this is kind of a shocking statement. What do you mean? I thought flux conservation was a sacred thing. Flux is always conserved. Yes, that is correct, but that is only in no, uh, that, that is only in ideal MHD. Okay. This is really no surprise. because ideal MHD is violated. Ideal MHD is violated at the neutral point, at the X point. Therefore, flux conservation is no longer, flux can be annihilated, flux can be swallowed up. Okay. Who swallows it? What happens to the magnetic, uh, magnetic energy? Well, this is exactly what we said earlier. Okay. Magnetic energy is technically converted into other forms of energy such as the kinetic energy of the fluid. It is also converted into heat and so on and so forth. Okay. So, um, so, so, this is the whole point of reconnection. We invoke reconnection, we invoke all this fancy non-ideal effects and everything to somehow uh, to serve as a vehicle, as a via media uh, to convert magnetic energy into other forms of energy such as bulk kinetic energy, uh, uh, bulk kinetic, kinetic energy of the fluid or fluid motion like a half rho, rho u squared kind of energy, but also thermal energy to heat up the plasma. Hot plasma radiates and that radiation is what is observed. So, most of the time when we observe the radiation, it seems like, we, you know, suppose it is a thermal black body radiation, you, you estimate a temperature from the peak, you know, from the peak wavelength of, of the radiation and, and, and you say, well, this seems a little hotter than one would expect. Okay. So, there is something going on, there is some kind of heating process going on, if not global, at least local. At least there is at least some local heating going on. Okay. What is, first of all, what is the energy reservoir that is that's, that's supplying the heat? Well, most likely magnetic energy. In other words, there is some way that magnetic fields are being stressed and twisted and turned and so that they, they, carry, they, they you know, carry with them more energy than the lowest possible energy state. So, that is one thing. But more importantly, okay, so you, you, you pumped some energy into the magnetic fields, fine. But how are you going to convert that into heat energy? Well, here you go. Reconnection is such a vehicle that allows conversion of magnetic energy into heat energy. You are now uh, um, allowing for finite resistivity and, 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 and therefore, uh, you, you can think of a Ohm's law kind of thing and joule heating uh, sort of thing, just like an I square R that you are familiar with. You, you now have a, no, uh, you have a non-zero or a finite R. Okay, so we will stop here for the time being and we will continue with uh, more details about reconnection. Thank you.